All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er update video on this Monday as Kyle Shanahan spoke to the to the media this afternoon. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that he discovered or discussed, I should say. And of course, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle. And of course, uh, this video is also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. All right, Kyle Shanahan spoke to the press today. He said that Diamador Lenore has a rib contusion and that Lenore is day-to-day. -day. So uh, his status for this week is not yet determined. Now, there were some other injuries. Kalia Davis has an ankle sprain, and looks like he's going to be out probably two or three weeks. Uh, Cleveland Farrell also is day-to-day -day with an ankle injury. Uh, he hopes to get uh, Spencer Burford back to practice at some point later on this week. Um, so Burford possibly could be making his way back to the lineup. Now, um you know, he talked a little bit about Debo's first touchdown on that opening drive, how they got the look that they really wanted there, and they were really happy with the fact that they got that look and were able to score that touchdown. Uh, the big topic, of course, was the run defense. The 49ers gave up a ton of yards in run defense, and they need to be a whole lot better. And Shanahan was asked, what was it that stood out to him when he watched the film again about the Niners' lack of good run D? And he talked about, you know, obviously, you know, first and foremost, they didn't have Eric Armstead. Uh, they didn't have J um, Javon Hargrave. And Armstead is easily their best interior run defender. And so, obviously, that made a huge impact on their inability to stop Dermacato and and James Conner running the ball. Um, both those guys were really, really good. Um, he also mentioned that, you know, when you lose the time of possession battle, like the Niners lost it, especially in the first half, and your defense logs lots of minutes on the field, that you start to be more and more ineffective against the run. So that was a factor, the fact that the Niners had lost the time of possession battle. And then, um, you know, he said the lack of depth, obviously, is hurting their, their ability to stop the run. But he felt like the biggest thing was that they just took some poor angles um, the Niners missed a bunch of tackles in this game. I mean, approaching 20 missed tackles, and a lot of it were just poor angles. You know, ang where they where they overshot, uh, they over pursued. They you know they're trying to spill it back inside, and they took a bad angle. Um, and if you watch the film, that's exactly what the film reveals. That you know there was a number of plays where the 49ers just took poor angles in their run pursuit and just could not make the the play just because they they took a bad angle. Warner did, Greenlaw did, the safeties did, um, and it happened five or six times throughout the game, and some of those led to some big chunk yardage runs, including a 40-yard run and a 49-yard run by Dermacato. So um, that was really key, and that's obviously something they're going to have to clean up. Why? Because the Ravens roll in. They got the number one rushing attack in all of football, led by Lamar Jackson, who probably is the most difficult quarterback to corral as a runner uh, of any quarterback in the game. So they got to take better angles. They got to get their depth back. They got to get Armstead and Hargrave back on the field. They got to make the time of possession a little bit more 50 50, and they got to take better angles against the run plays if they're going to do a better job defending the run. He was asked about Brock Purdy's stinger, and um, he said that, that, you know, that, that they have no new information on it that Brock felt good last night and he hasn't gotten any new information on it. Um, you know, he said basically that, that um, he was asked about Brock's field vision and whether or not that's, you know, a trait that you're born with or if it's developed. And, you know, he basically, he talked for a while and said that it's really both. I mean, he said that you're born with a basic amount of field vision. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Uh, Brock Purdy has tremendous field vision, but then it's also a matter of of uh, something. It's a trait that it's a God given trait, according to Shanahan, having that field vision. But obviously, it can be developed, 
and it can be improved. And it, they feel like they've helped, you know, helped his vision. But at the same time, this is stuff that he had, you know, you know, the vision of the field that Brock has is something he probably had in high school and he probably had at Iowa State. Um, Matt Barrows asked the question with the with the injuries on the defensive tackle position, are the 49ers going to pursue Ndamukong Sue, who's a free agent? Shanahan would was not committal uh, either way. Um, he basically said not yet, but that he wouldn't rule anything out. Bottom line is the 49ers are getting awfully thin inside. I mean, you, you've you lost Armstead, um, at least in the short term. They've lost Hargrave to the hamstring injury. That's also a short-term injury. They've got Kinlaw. They've got Kevin Givens, and they've got Kalia Davis. And if Davis is now down with, um, you know, for any period of time with an ankle sprain, which it sounds like he's out for the, at least the next couple of weeks with an ankle sprain, um, they're probably going to have to go get some defensive tackle. Now, is that Sue? I don't know. There's a number of defensive tackles out there. Um, Ross Blacklock is another one that's a free agent. You know, there's a number of free agent defensive tackles. They could they could activate Spencer Wagey off their practice squad. They've got T.Y. McGill. McGill's more of a one-gap penetrator, pass rusher type um, than a real strong two-gapper run defender. So I, I think it's very likely that the 49ers will be looking at some defensive tackles here in the next couple of weeks just to take some inventory of what's out there to see if they're going to need another body. Um, it's really tough as the year goes on to then go, you know, sign guys off the street. They don't know your culture. They don't know your defense. Um, but it sounds like they may be forced to do exactly that uh, because they really – you know, if nothing else, they'll most likely be signing a defensive tackle to their practice squad. And then they'll be playing with, you know, T.Y. McGill, Javon Kinlaw, and Kevin Givens until Eric Armstead and um, and Javon Hargrave can make their way back to the lineup. Because it sounds like Kalia Davis is probably going to be out for two or three weeks. Um, he Kyle was also asked about the, the, the you know, the touchdown to CMC. And, you know, how he backpedaled on that touchdown catch. And, you know, Kyle's comment was that he didn't feel like Christian saw the ball. And so when the ball was in the air, they were really nervous about whether or not he could make the catch or not because they didn't feel like he saw it. Uh, but then when he caught the ball, they felt good about it because there was nobody in the area. And sure enough, McCaffrey caught it, got back up on his feet and ran in for a touchdown. Um, to give the 49ers six more points in that blowout victory that ultimately resulted in the Niners winning 45-29. And then the presser ended with a discussion about the Ravens, and Kyle admitted that you know he's been working on wrapping up the Cardinals and that he hasn't really gotten into his deep dive on the Baltimore Ravens, but that they're a well-run organization, uh, that Lamar Jackson is a force at quarterback, um, that that he's an elite runner, but he's a guy that both as a runner and as a thrower sees the field really, really well and can run, can win with his arms or his legs. So, um, you know, he said that they have a similar style uh, scheme to what they've had in, in the past, but he hasn't really done the deep dive on the Ravens, and he'll get into that later today. So Christmas night, Niners and Ravens, maybe the Super Bowl preview the Ravens roll in. They just lost Keaton Mitchell at running back, so they don't have the fast little back from, from uh, East Carolina. Uh, but they still have Justice Hill, and they still have um, you know a, a strong, the number one rushing attack in the game. Lamar can go for 100 yards anytime he needs to. they got a big physical offensive line and a really good defense, so it's going to be a huge challenge for the Niners on Christmas night for sure. And, of course, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. And this video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. And make sure you check that link in the description. And use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. And thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.